Good morning and welcome everyone to another day of cloud computing question and answers. My name is Michael Gibbs and I've been working in tech now for over 25 years and I've been helping build the people's careers for more than two decades. Network architect careers, network engineer careers, cloud engineer careers, cloud architect careers, enterprise architect careers, and I want to help you get cloud hired. Almost every day one of my students gets cloud hired. Actually, yesterday two of my students were cloud hired and it's my best part of the day. So that's why I'm here to help you learn how to build your best cloud computing career. So I'm online completely free three times per week to answer any questions so you can build your career. See, what I know after 25 years of advising people and after being in technology for 25 years, here's what I've learned. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And if you know the path and you have the roadmap, your success is like a rocket ship. Likewise, if you don't know the path, what happens is people go zigzag up, down, up, down, and sometimes they never get to their goals. And if they do, they get to their goals decades later than they could with the right path. So I want you to know exactly how to be laser focused, how to get the job you, you dream about, and how to get cloud hired. And that's why I'm here completely free three times per week. Before we begin the question and answer section, which I really want to help you get answers to your questions, and please ask your questions in the chat box. I want to tell you about some amazing and free things we're doing for you to help build your cloud computing career. Let me tell you right now, we're going to do another free AWS bootcamp in October. And it's going to be just like real training. We would never torture you with that kind of certification training that's out there where it's PowerPoint slides with blah, 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 and you can't ask questions. It'll be live. And you'll be able to ask me questions on YouTube, and it'll be great. We'll teach for about 20 minutes. You'll ask questions for about 10 minutes. So it's going to be a real classroom experience taught by real architects that have actually worked in the field, not people that just got certified and didn't know. Because I want you all cloud hired, and that's why we're going to do it completely, completely free. So sign up. The link is in the description below, the chat box, and uh, we're excited to give you some more free training. In addition to that free training, guess what else we're doing? We're going to be giving you a completely free book on passing the Google Professional Cloud Architect exam. My team is in the final stages of editing it now, and it's gonna be coming out soon. So pre-register to download your completely free Google Professional Cloud Architect book. Again, compliments of Go Cloud Careers, because we want you all to build the best cloud competing careers. Now, we've seen the economic data out there, and it is not great in terms of inflation. I mean, the inflation is about 8.3% minimum, and that's assuming you strip out some of the core stuff. And when you add the core stuff in, the average American has been working for one month free every year just to keep up with inflation in the last 12 months. So to help you through that, we're running a 30% discount. Use coupon code POTENTIAL. I know that the easiest way to not care about inflation is double or triple your salary. And when you earn enough, you don't care about the price of things. And that's why we have this 30% off discount code POTENTIAL. Almost every day one of my students gets hired and they get hired for big salaries because we focus on not just the tech. Anybody can teach tech. But what makes an architect that makes them special is business acumen, leadership skills, sales skills, executive presence, executive presence, CXO relevancy. That's what it takes to be great. And that's what we teach that because those are the skills that can add another six figures on top of your traditional architect salary on more and more and more as you build your career. So we focus on those. So you not only get hired, but you rise to the occasion, you stand out above the crowd and you get cloud promoted. Now, before we get to the questions, and please ask me some questions in the chat box. I want to tell you about one more thing. Next Thursday, completely free, we're going to have our How to Get Your First Cloud Architect Job webinar. Usually people come from all over the world, hundreds of people at a time. They ask us questions. We guide them on all the things they need to do so they can get cloud hired. And that's realistically the speaking to why we do it. So come join us next week. Completely free webinar. We'll cover things like how to leverage your life experience. We'll talk about the, with the things that hiring managers dream about. We'll talk about how to bypass HR so you can get your resume in the hands of the hiring manager so you don't get auto-rejected when you lack experience. We'll show you what you need to do when you lack experience to wow the hiring manager. All free. All free. So, so please join us on some of these things. But if you really want to get caught hard, take advantage of that 30% off discount code. Just yesterday, two more of my students get hot got hired. And you know, every day people say, am I too young? Or am I too old? Well, yesterday, the two cloud hires, one was 61 and one was 63. And they're ecstatic. And the point is, we can have people as young as Daniel Bosa, who turned 21 when he got his first cloud architect job. 
And we've got people that are 63 years old that we're working with that are getting cloud architect jobs and everywhere in between in every country in the world. Hey, Chris, how are you? Hey, Mike, I wanted to point out something. So you talk about how they just got, how these, these two people just got cloud hired. You failed to mention that one of them just got the highest paying job they've ever had. Yes. Actually, they both did. <laughs> they both did. But one, said it was, one said it was double the best salary you ever had. Double. That's what I, I couldn't remember exactly what they said. I knew you knew the specifics. Double. Uh, more than double what their highest job ever was. And I just I wanted to reiterate that for you. <laughs> and when we asked him why, and he went on the interview, they're like, Mike, they, 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 were so, they were so happy with my executive presence, my CXO relevancy, business acumen, and soft skills. They, they, he said, we can do anything we want with that. Yeah. I also wanted to pop on here to make sure everyone's aware that uh, Mike mentioned the AWS boot camp coming up. That's just the beginning. For all of October and November, we're going to be doing all kinds of all kinds of free things for y'all. So I'm going to ask Chow to put Mike's LinkedIn profile uh, in the uh, chat box because. You need, I want you to make sure that you're following Mike on LinkedIn because we're going to have the AWS bootcamp. We're going to have um, special workshops afterwards. We're going to have interview practice sessions. We're going to have a networking bootcamp after that. And we're going to have special guests all throughout the month. Uh, and that's going to span from October to November. So I just wanted to reiterate that um, to make sure that people know to follow you on LinkedIn so that they are aware of all of these things that are coming out that don't cost them a dime. They don't cost them anything. Nothing. It doesn't nothing. cost them $995 for a Solutions Architect Bootcamp. Yeah. I <laughs> they mean, can just come here to YouTube and watch why us. Why would anybody pay $999 for a Solution Architect Bootcamp? We do it completely free. Completely yeah. free. And I'll have, maybe we'll have one of our staff economists on. We may have some tech leaders on. It's going to be a good month for you. So we want to make sure you have tools, tools, and more tools, and we yeah. build your career, regardless of what you're doing. And then someone asked, uh, Ming asked if this was live. Yes, Ming, this is live. <laughs> so Absolutely. I hope that answers your question. All right, I'll let you get back to it, Mike. I just wanted to pop in. And no, thank you for call. reminding me. You know, I wanted to make sure that we give people a lot of tools. I'm all about giving people tools, teaching people how to fish so they can have a lifetime of wealth. Good to see you, Patel. It's so wonderful to see you. Akbar, hello everyone. Unfortunately, I'm using a different monitor. It's hard to see uh, your comments. Here to win, Khaled Architect, Lady Godiva. Good morning. It's so wonderful to see you today. Here to win, so excited for the AWS Bootcamp. I am too. I mean, I have a community. Our, our Go Cloud Careers program is a family. But you know what? Anytime I get to speak to the greater cloud computing community, that's really great too. And I love doing anything I can to help this industry grow. Yes, cloud hired. When it's good to see you can't wait to be cloud hired. Uh, when I have a feeling you're going to be cloud hired uh, pretty soon. Ming, is this live or recorded? Well, Ming, we are not, we're talking live right now. Shoot for the stars, cloud hired. Jimmy Henry, good morning. How are you? Grace, hello, Mike. What would be a good niche for someone who's interested in the security aspect of cloud computing? You currently work for a Microsoft company. This is, it is your first cloud job. Grace, you got two options. Well, there's lots of options in security, but you know my favorite is the cloud security architect, and here's the reason. It's the highest paying by far of any of these roles. It has the most career potential, and I routinely get cloud security architects hired, and they do very, very well. But you gotta remember, Grace, a cloud security architect is an architect position. The reason it pays so well is as follows. You're going to be doing two things. You're going to be meeting with clients, designing solutions for clients, and selling those solutions back to the client. As such, you bring in money to the company. And when you bring in money to the company, you are a source of revenue, not an expense. So the highest paying of these jobs is going to be the cloud security architect. Love this job. I train lots of them. We get people hired as cloud security architects all the time. I love it. Who knows? Maybe on one of the, our head in the cloud so soon, I'll bring in another cloud security architect. I brought Delroy Bad on recently, and he's a fantastic, but I may bring in another one very soon. Now, the next thing that you could be 
would be the cloud security engineer. Now that's a completely different role. So the architect is a design present and sell role. And the cloud security engineer role is a configurer role. So the cloud security engineer will be working on the firewalls, the IDS IPS systems, hardening down the operating system, disabling unnecessary services, patching systems. They'll be looking at uh, configuring uh, the connections between say Active Directory and your cloud for identity access management or authentication authorization accounting. They're gonna be implementing things. So what we're really talking about is a cloud security architect, which is a design present and sell position where you're designing a solution to solve a customer's problems and protect the asset. And then we have the cloud engineering position, the cloud security engineering position, which is the doer. Now, when we're on, on uh, security engineering, there's really two fronts. There's the offensive front, I'm gonna go out there and get to, and there's the defensive front, which is I'm gonna protect. And what is the difference? The offensive security people are paid to break into systems. The reason they're paid to break into systems is when you break into the system, you can find all its weaknesses. And then you tell that company, here's are your weaknesses, so here's how you fix it. And that's considered white hat hacking. That is a wonderful cloud security engineer position, but it's the offensive security. Now, by comparison, by comparison, the, uh, there's a defensive security person, which is more of what I've done, which is how do you protect the organization? And basically, those are your three things. So the cloud security architect, poof. The cloud security engineer, which can be offensive or defensive. They're all great. But if you're looking to maximize your salary, career potential, and long-term promotability, it's the cloud security architect. If you love the tech and truly love the tech, like I've got a lot of friends that truly love the tech, then it's one of those engineering positions. Great job. If you'd like guidance on how to get to any of them, if you tell me your desires, I'll tell you how to do that too. Great question there, Grace. The key is finding something you love. So congratulations for working on uh, for Microsoft company. Congratulations, that means you're cloud hired, which Grace makes me very happy. So now the direction is where do you wanna take your career? You give us some guidance and I will give you the path so you can get cloud promoted. Great question. All of you, please feel free to ask some questions in the chat box and give me a hashtag where you're from as well. Also give me a hashtag cloud hired and give me a hashtag on your career, cloud architect, cloud engineer, so we know who you are so we can guide you to your best careers. John Daniel, good morning all. Victor, cloud hired, are you my Victor that recently got cloud hired? If so, I'm so happy to see you here. If not, there's there. And yes, like Chris says, don't be shy. I'm an easygoing bear. I'm so soft and cuddly when it comes to answering questions. I'm warm and friendly. Don't be shy. Up and up. I know you said the AWS cert is more recognized in the job market, but my job requiring me to get a GCP. Should you get both? Up and up. If your job requires you to do it, do it, because then it's a job thing. Let's face it. Yesterday, I got somebody that had an incredible cloud security architect job, and the only cert he had was a cloud practitioner. Delroy Batten, for example, had zero cloud certs. Jeff, who asked that a cloud practitioner. So look, if you're getting hired by getting some silly certification, go get the silly certification. I mean, the certifications aren't gonna do anything for you other than get you an interview. But if your job says do it and they're gonna pay you to do it, just do it. Look, I, I remember when my job said, we want you to be a CISSP. And I said, okay. So they brought in somebody for the week. They taught us to see CISSP buck and that Saturday, back when it was a paper test, all 5,000 of us passed the CISSP because there was nothing exam to do. But the point is, we needed it for our jobs. We got paid our salary to go do it. So if your company wants to pay you for something and mandate it, go to some Google training somewhere. Spend a couple days there. Eat some good steaks. Drink some nice wine. Stay in a nice hotel. Knock out the silly certification. And then go focus on your job. And here's the reality up and up. You don't have to put half of these certifications that you have on your resume anyway. And here's why we're going to say this. When you're really trying to build your career, sometimes if you get too many certifications, meaning more than three, you become unhirable because they, they view you as a techie, not an architect. And up and up, I think you're an architect person. But reality is as follows. Just enjoy your life. If your job wants you to get the Google one, just get the Google one. And uh, if you're already working and the Google one's enough, then don't waste your time with the AWS lens. It's not going to help you. The real reason we do any silly certification is as follows. 
It makes you look competent on paper. Now, the reality is certifications equate to zero competency. I've known this because I've interviewed a thousand AWS certified people prior to starting this organization, and none were hireable. They all did the name of a service and how to configure it, but none knew architecture. But if your job's paying you to do something, it's there. If my manager says, write this 3,000 page book, I'm going to write the 3,000 page book. So if they want you to do the Google exam, do the Google exam. But if you're working, don't waste your time with another certification. And if you're not in the job you want, get this, uh, the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional. It's kind of like an intro to junior level cloud computer. We know that. It's like 5% of what you need for the job. But that's OK, because they'll get you the interview. And on the interview, you can prove that you actually know something which is not covered in the certification. So up and up, why do I view these certifications as silly, goofy, and irrelevant? For the following reason. Here's what's taught in a certification. Here's the name of a service like DynamoDB, and here's how you configure it. OK. Now, the reality is none of us should ever use DynamoDB. Now, DynamoDB is an extremely great NoSQL database. It's wonderful. But why shouldn't we use it? It's proprietary. And what do these certifications do? They teach you how to use the proprietary stuff, which handcuffs you and locks you into a single vendor. And when that vendor goes down, guess what? The company is nothing. If that vendor raises their prices, the company's handcuffed and they can't get out of there. So they lose the availability to have reduced security. And what's worse? You know, as t when you use a proprietary something, you can only work proprietary on that cloud. Now, when you want to innovate and you're looking for digital transformation, you're not looking to be locked into anything. What you're actually looking at is flexibility, agility, speed, and performance. So when you get rid of proprietary things such as Cloud Bigtable and Google, Microsoft Cosmos DB, DynamoDB, all great, all great databases, and we swap it out with a Mongo database or an Apache Cassandra. Now we're talking, because now we can use three different clouds all at the same time. One cloud goes down, oof, who cares? What else? Agility, speed, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And also, now we can leverage the best of each cloud. So think about it up and up. Who's the best algorithm maker in the world? Google, Google. Number one search engine in the world, number two search engine in the world. So if I'm going to do an AI machine learning thing, it's going to be on Google unless we're doing it on the data center easily. Now, if I'm thinking about which company can advise me best in terms of business performance, I'm probably thinking Microsoft because they have years of experience in the enterprise making enterprises more profitable with technology. And when I look at AWS, I look at a massively powerful cloud that's ubiquitous and has so much capacity. So see, when we combine all three, we can get some incredible things. Better security, better availability, better performance, better digital transformation. Kind of keep on that, and, you'll, and that's why it's good. But should you get both? It's up to you. But if you do, don't get associate certs. Make sure it's a professional one, because I don't like to see associate certifications on a resume. No manager does. And when you talk to managers and you see somebody that's got six associate certifications, they're like, why is this person going to do something that makes them almost ready for six different jobs? I still can't hire them. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. You could do it. It's not going to hurt you to do it. But if you've got too many certifications, make sure that you remove them when you actually apply for jobs based upon the job you want. Apply for a Google job, put the Google cert on. Apply for an interview job, get rid of the Google cert. Make sure your resume looks focused. And only the professional ones are really what you want on your resume whenever possible. Good question there, up and up. And please, everyone, ask your questions. And Chris, we can go to the next one. Cookie Monster. Wow, that was my favorite Sesame Street character. I love the Cookie Monster, and I alliterate like the Cookie Monster. So, hey, Mike, new to this channel, came across you recently, and it was like a breath of fresh air. I love that. C is for cookies, me crunch them a bunch, me eat them for dinner and breakfast and lunch. See, I love the Cookie Monster, too. And uh, what a great character. So love that as a username. So wonderful to see you here today. And I look forward to seeing more of you. Cookie Monster, I'm not sure if you want to do engineering or architect. How might you determine this? Okay, Cookie Monster, that is a great question. It's all about what will you enjoy. So I'm going to go over the roles. The architect is a customer-facing role. It is a business executive role with a focus on technology. In the architect world, 
you will not touch the technology. I mean, you will write a document, you'll make an Excel spreadsheet, you'll sell, send emails and you may draw some pictures, but that's the limit of your touching of the technology. Now the architect roles pay by far more than an engineer and can potentially pay double or triple the engineer's salary, but that's not enough of a reason to do it. So for the architect, it's all about design. So a building architect designs it, a cloud architect does the same job. So for the skills for the cloud architect are business acumen, executive presence, leadership skills, sales skills, emotional intelligence, the ability to respond to RFIs, RFPs, RFQs, so lots more document writing, the ability to entertain clients, the ability to make presentations, presenting at conferences, executive briefings, training people. That's what we do as architects. Now, we also design the solution, which means we have to lead large teams of people working together for the design. It's usually a team of 30, 40, 50 people on a big architecture. And for the architect, it's about knowing how the, what is the technology, how does the technology work, and how, to, and how to actually configure that technology. So the architect will need to know BGP, for example, OSPF, IP addressing, submitting, supernetting, switching concepts such as VLANs, VLAN tagging, VLAN trunking, spanning tree, rapid spanning tree, port channel, ether channel, link aggregation groups, those kind of things. WAN technology such as SSL, BPNs, IPsec tunnels, private lines, ethernet open MPLS, software defined networking, say SASE, DNS, DHCP, R, proxy. See, the engineers will need to know these too, but for the architect, it's a different role. For the architect, it's how do I glue these pieces together? Now, the architect, those are the networking components the architect needs, and the engineer needs those same components, by the way. Now, the cloud architect will also need to know about servers and server virtualizations and containers and container orchestration, block storage, object storage, file storage types of environments, load balancers, uh, different types of databases, relational databases, no SQL databases, for example, and uh, security appliances such as firewalls, VPN concentrators, IDS, IPS systems. But for the architect, it's about how they work because we design the pieces and parts, but we don't touch the technology. Now, the cloud engineer is a deep, deep, deep hands-on professional. The cloud architect you're going to be home, you're going to be talking to people, presenting, selling, those kind of things. Now, the cloud engineer has got a completely different job. This person is stuck behind the desk 10 hours a day coding and configuring. Now, where the architect needs to know this network and data centers for the design purposes, the engineer needs to basically focus on them all day, all day, all day, all day, all day. So the engineer will need to know how to code, specifically Python. The engineer will be deploying infrastructure as code, like Terraform. The engineer will be working on Linux all day long. They'll be doing Linux scripting, say Bash scripting. They'll be configuring the cloud to the management console, CLI, and uh, infrastructure as code. But the engineer pays roughly 50% of the architect role. Now, if you're one of those people that's a techie that loves sitting behind a desk and coding and configuring and doesn't like to talk to people, you will love that engineering job. And I've got a lot of engineering students and they're wonderful. They're just, they're techies. Engineers are techies. And if you like to get your hands on tech, you want an engineering job. And if you're not gonna be happy if you don't get your hands on the tech, you want an engineering job. But if you want a leadership position and you don't feel like sitting behind a desk all day and you wanna to talk to people and entertain clients and you wanna get paid double or triple throughout your career, you wanna be an architect. But it's, a pay is not enough of a reason to do it. you got to figure out what you like. Both are really great. For example, I have a friend, Moses. When you knock on his door in his house, it's the coolest thing. He says hello. The lights dim. Lights go on in different rooms. He claps. One thing happens. He says, play reggae because he knows I love reggae. And Bob Marley's on. And then he's like, nope, put on some Collie Buds for Mike. He likes him. Then he's like, no, put on some Ziggy Marley. And it all changes just by him talking. He loves that. Me, a friend got me an Amazon Alexa, and I, and, I, and I gave it back to him, and I said, I don't want anything that listens to me. I said, I don't enjoy all this stuff. I just want to live in, a, in, a, in an environment. So that's the thing. If you're one of those people that needs to have every piece of technology in your house and likes that, then poof, you probably want to be a cloud engineer. But if you enjoy reading financial publications, and if you enjoy presentations and leading, you want to be an architect. That's how you determine it. I personally, as an engineer, and much preferred being an architect.
But I have other people that like being engineers, so it's all about what's going to make you happy. That's the secret. Do you want to be stuck behind a computer and code and configure all day, or do you want to design, present, and sell? Design, present, and sell? Architect. Code and configure? Engineer. It's up to you. Both great jobs. Chris, we can go to the next one. I do love that. And Cookie Monster, thank you for coming. My favorite character, by the way. Give me, give me just a second. Sure, sure. Uh, I had a picture of me with the Cookie Monster, but apparently uh, I can't find it. Oh, I wish you did. I love Cookie Monster. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know where it went, but I was going to put my picture of me with the Cookie Monster. I was actually stealing the Cookie Monster's cookie. So <laughs> I love that. Yosef, just got your receipt for the program bundle, Cloud Architect Career Development Basic. Welcome, Yosef. We are thrilled to be working with you. Can't wait till you're cloud hired. So please enjoy the course. Please follow it directly. Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. And please do not forget to watch those weekly group coaching calls. That's when we do the main tech education. And the live classes, which you'll get to watch the recordings of, we're doing hands-on live architecture designs. And that's where we really get into the technical things. And a lot of those projects in between classes are related to soft skills and communication skills. In the beginning, Yosef, we spend so much time on your career plan. Why? Because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So realize in the beginning for those first couple of weeks, we're going to, first couple of lessons are going to be heavy duty on the career planning and the communication skills side. And here's why. After interviewing thousands of people and thousands and thousands and thousands, we have to boost your communication skills because it's not possible to be hired as an architect, for example, by studying engineering things, never. So you've got to get those soft skills, communication skills, leadership skills, so it's that. But also, Yosef, when you're interviewing for your first architect job and you don't have experience, 50% of your score is related to your, uh, what do you call it, your technical competency, but the other 50% is not. It's related to your business acumen, your leadership skills, your soft skills, your executive presence, your communication skills. These are the things that are taught to some degree in MBA programs and also in executive, executive post-MBA program training. That's why, Yosef, I actually have three MBAs on staff intentionally that were all executive prior to even joining us. I also have an, an economist with a master's degree in economics. And he's there to also make sure that our people get economics because that's another critical thing, especially now in a hyperinflationary environment. Our architects are going to be working on automation technologies to, uh, to make it a little easier. Our architects are going to be working on ways to outsource engineering positions and software development positions to developing nations. That's what architects do in these kind of environments. So we need to make sure we've got that. I also have some other people with master's degrees as well because we need to make sure you are polished up like a diamond and look like a diamond. So when you go out there on your interview, of course you'll be competent because we'll make you competent, but you'll also be a business leader and executive with those leadership skills and polish. And the world's going to look past your lack of experience. That's why we get people hired every single day. That's why we do it every, every single day. Yesterday we got two new cloud architects hired and it was really exciting for me. So for me, that's the highlight of my day when I get my cloud hired. It's the highlight of Chris's day, highlight of Lonzo's day. And of course, whether Chow or Leo or Eddie or Manuela or or and I know I'm I know I'm, I know I'm or Tracy and I know I'm missing people because we're live. We all celebrate every cloud hard. So Yosef, when you are hired, you got to let us know because if you're in class in the live program, we get to see you and talk to you and watch you grow. And here we don't get to see you, so please tell me when you're cloud hard, and we're all excited to train you. And I can't wait till you get cloud hard. I know you're in Israel. Yosef sounds more Arabic, so salam aleichem. But if you're Jewish, shalom. In either case, one of the two should work for you. We're just excited to be working with you. Chris, we can go to the next one. There we go, the cookie monster. 
Sorry, I just couldn't. I couldn't help it. Uh, it's like one of my favorite pictures. <laughs> I literally love the Cookie Monster. My, I had a sister that's four years, fourteen years younger than me, and she had a couple of Cookie Monster books, and I used to read them to her every single day. I actually could remember, could recite them word for word. And my wife loves cookies and is the Cookie Monster and loves the Cookie Monster. So I've always been a big fan of the Cookie Monster. If I ever get in a doghouse, I buy a Cookie Monster stuffed animal. And I'm out of the doghouse that day. So Cookie Monster is one of my favorite friends. Uh... You're welcome, Yosef. It's so nice, to see, so nice to be working with you. John Daniel, Cloud Hired Chicago. Chow, good to see you. Cloud Hired, Cloud Architect in Dallas, Texas. We love you, Chow. Chow, you do so many wonderful things with our students. You're fantastic. Lady Godiva, Cloud Hired in Houston, Texas. Fantastic. We got uh, a lot like Alonzo over there. And Victor, Cloud Hired in Atlanta, Georgia. Victor, if you're the Victor I know, you're Cloud Hired, and we're so proud of you. Gracie, you already have your SACO2 and that you work for an Azure-based company. Should you focus on cloud security, AWS, or Azure? It doesn't matter. Thank you for answering my question. Grace, it's never about certifications, ever. It's about competency in your job. What would you like to do? That's the answer. I don't know what's going to make you happy. Mark Twain said, make your vocation your vacation, and you'll never work a day in your life. And Grace, if you're not in the U.S. or and you don't think of the term "what is vacation," think of it as your holiday. So make your make your holiday your job, and you'll never work a day in your life. So that's the thing. So see, Grace, I used to practice internal medicine a long time ago. I liked it, but I love tech. What I really love in tech is networking. To me, networking is super awesome. So I went from medicine to tech. And I became a networking. I was a network engineer, a network architect, an enterprise architect. Now, all of us network engineers, we're working on the cloud since 1996. In 1996, I worked on the frame relay cloud. In 1998 or so, I worked on the ATM cloud. Around 2000, I worked on the BGP RFC 2547 cloud. Around 2001, it was the VPLS cloud. So all your cloud people are old networking people. And I loved it then, and I still love it today. But that's what matters. It's never the certification. Never, ever. That's not true. There is one certification that holds industry value, and that's called the Cisco Certified Internet Expert. Now, when I did it to pass that exam, you had to do about 75,000 pages of reading, and it cost me $40,000 to pass that exam. That exam is worth it. Why? Because it's so deep that to pass that thing, you actually have to know something. But I could get you through the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional in less than three days if I gave you the right practice test. And that's why... No employer cares about them anymore. So what you should study is what you want. Want to be a cloud architect? Study the network, the data center, business acumen, leadership skills, sales skills, executive presence. That's what you should do. Want to be a cloud engineer? Focus on Linux, Terraform, Python, Bash shell scripting, and cloud configurations, networking data centers. See, it's all that. So we need to know what you want to do. And if you tell me what you want to do, I would give you there. But let's say you're kind of asking this question equivalent. So if you said, let's say we're at London Heathrow Airport. And you said to me, Mike, which plane should I go on? And I'm like, I don't know. Do you want to go to Lake, La Lagos? Do you want to go to Cameroon? Do you want to go to Cambodia? Do you want to go to Chicago? Do you want to go to Cape Town? Do you want to go to the Cayman Islands? Clearly, I like the cookie monster and I alliterate. But that's the thing. I don't know where you want to go. And until I know where you want to go, I can't tell you which plane to get on. Now, if you get on the wrong plane and you wanted to go to Cambodia in Southeast Asia and you ended up in Cameroon, you might have a wonderful trip, but you might not be happy because you're in the destination that's not where you wanted to go. Same thing here. So if you get the wrong certifications, like if a cloud architect gets 10 certifications, they're not an architect anymore. And nobody will take them seriously as an architect because they're going to look like a techie. And nobody wants a techie as an architect. They want a business executive that knows tech. So if you do too many certs as an architect, your architecture career is over. Likewise, if you get the wrong certifications, 
like sysops and things like that that are totally unrelated, then you really look bad if you want to be an architect or DevOps or sysops, because that shows you're everything other than an architect. But if you want to be a DevOps engineer, you might need a DevOps certification to look there. So what would you like to do? If you tell me your goal, I can tell you how to get there. If you tell me your destination, I can, help, I can look up a flight plan and help tell you how to get there too, but that's what I need to know. What would you like to do, Grace? You tell me that, and I'll build you a path. But we can't do the training until we know your goals because we'll train you for the wrong job, and that's going to be a problem. So I want to answer your question. Tell me your goals, and I'll get right back to you. Until we know Grace's goals, and that's a great question, Chris, could you uh, bring me to the next question? DZ, you've got eight years of IT experience, okay, and you got a certification, okay, and you're looking to get on the engineering side. Any tips to break through the interview? Can't seem to get any interviews. Yes, you actually have to be trained as a cloud engineer. There's nothing in the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional that will make you a cloud engineer, despite having years of experience. Now, if you know how to write Python and you've been doing it for years, and if you've been using Terraform infrastructure as code, and if you're a Linux expert and can configure and manage engineering things on Linux, and if you understand IP addressing, subnetting, supernetting, VLANs, VLAN tagging, VLAN trunking, and if you understand NAT, one-to-one NAT, one-to-many NAT, static NAT, dynamic NAT, PAT, if you understand WAN technology, such as IPsec tunnels, SSL-based VPNs, VPN, uh, I, uh, private lines, Ethernet over PLS, software-defined networking, and SASE, and if you've got a good knowledge of servers and server virtualization and containers and container orchestration, block storage, object storage, file storage, knowing uh, how to build and maintain and scale relational databases, no SQL databases, you've got a good understanding of business applications and you've got a good understanding of next generation firewalls, IDS, IPS systems, VPN concentrators, because you're not going to use any of that stuff in your certification. And you have that skill, then it's a matter of building your brand polishing up your resume, and going on interviews. But if all you have is the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional, I know you said associate, but I'm saying the professional, you've got 5% of what you need. Now, you didn't tell me what your IT experience is. In general, experience does not mean that much. And there is the reason it doesn't mean that much. If it's not related experience, it's just stuff. So let me give you an example. I'm an architect, and I have been for decades. I used to practice medicine. The job of internal medicine to the architect is a thousand times more relevant than a help desk job. And here's the reason why. Here's what a doctor does. Patient comes to the office with a problem. The doctor asks the patient, tell him, what is your problem? The patient says this. Then the doctor doesn't ask some questions to get some information. Then the doctor does an exam, makes a diagnosis and builds a plan. Now the cloud architect, for example, talks with a client, asks about their business goals, pain points and challenges, examines the patient by bringing in cloud engineers to baseline the systems, makes a diagnosis and builds a plan. See, doctor experience is relevant to the architect. And that's why my first job was really an architect because it's the same job. But if I worked help desk, they would have said, yeah, so that has nothing to do with designing, presenting and selling. And if it was a cloud admin, they'd say that has nothing to do with designing, presenting and selling. And if it was a cloud engineer, they'd still be like, well, yeah, but you don't know architecture. So if you can tell me what goal you have which you have, if you can tell me what your experience is and what you've actually learned, then we can help you get there. But understand, no good job you will ever get by getting a certification, none of them. And that's the problem. And it's not that I hate certifications. I don't like the way certification providers lied to people and said, pass this, you're going to get hired. And if not, hey, there's lots of recruiters out there just post on a channel. It doesn't work that way. So DZ, it takes me 500 hours to take a technology professional and turn them into a cloud engineer. I have to teach them networking. I have to teach them data centers. I have to teach them cloud. I have to teach them how to code for engineers. I have to teach them Linux. I have to teach them Terraform. And we look at the certified solution architect professional as kind of like an intro to junior level cloud admin, not cloud engineering. Here's the difference. Certifications are the name of a service and how to configure that service, which is fine for an admin. But an engineer is a deep technology professional. They have to tune their performance. They have to optimize it. They have to guide the admins on how to configure it, and they have to build it. So those are the things that need to be on your. But if all you've got is certifications, nobody's going to deal with you, and nobody's going to be interested in you. What's going to happen is you're going to go to an interview, and they're going to say, come back when you have experience. Now, the next thing we need to diagnose, DZ, and I'm not sure I've never spoken to you, 
a lot of times we have someone that's very technically competent, very, really smart. I have an engineer like that right now. But this engineer refuses to speak. And when they do speak, it's hard to get the information out of them. So to get them hired, we need to get them speaking and working on polishing their communication skills. And here's the reason why. Nobody knows what's in your head. So if you're not focusing on your communication skills and your presentation skills and interview skills and sales skills, guess what? You're probably still not going to get hired. And here's the reason why. You have to sell the hiring manager into hiring you. You have to build your resume in a way that's like bait. The reason when people go fishing and they put like a worm on the hook or a fish on the hook to catch another fish, they need bait. You need bait on your resume. So the bait could be how you tune your resume, how you position your experience related to the actual cloud architect job, which means you need to understand what is the cloud engineer job or the cloud architect job, which is, again, not covered in certification. So what you need to do is as follows. Take a cloud engineering program to become a cloud engineer, and then you'll become a cloud engineer. But don't confuse certification with careers. They're not the same. Certification is the name of a service and how to configure that service. Many of those services you can't use because they're proprietary. Engineering is about performance tuning and optimization. You're not going to get that in the certification, except for the Cisco Certified Internet Expert. But that's going to cost you $30,000, $40,000 to do anyway. it will be cheaper just to take a cloud engineering course. We'd love to work with you, but and we can easily get you hired. But understand, it's not about certification. And that's why you're not getting interviews. If you're getting interviews, you're not getting them. My average student gets multiple interview requests per day. In fact, we're going to have somebody on our channel next Tuesday night that just got cloud hired. And he got 20 interviews a day after we did our LinkedIn and resume work with him in one of our classes because he, he put the right bait out there. He showed employers that they were needed, and they came after him every day. And now he's cloud hired. So you have to know the job, experience the job to build the right resume for the job. So either find a senior cloud engineer or a distinguished cloud engineer to tutor you and rebuild your resume or take our cloud engineer career development program and sooner or later you'll be cloud hired up and up what are some of the characteristics that one should have trying to get a cloud architect position as their first job you got it up and up here are the characteristics. We've got two extreme positions. We've got a cloud engineer that's a techie, 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 techie. We've got a cloud architect that's a business executive. So just yesterday, one of my cloud architects was in a meeting. And he said, oh, my God, I needed an engineer. So I brought them in the meeting. And the engineer would, wouldn't stop talking about tech to the point where the CEO was escorting them out of the room. I said, yes. He said, I saved it. I summarized it in four sentences and we closed the deal. But how to escort the engineer out of the room? And I said, yeah, well, unfortunately, that happens sometimes. And he asked me how to deal with it. And I said, uh, tell him, thank you for your input. I'll take it from here. And here's why. The engineer is a deep, 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 deep techie. Super smart, super critical people. Techie, 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 techie. But, you know, if you think about the hat with the propellers and the Coke bottle thick glasses, that's the perception management has of engineers. It doesn't have to be that way. You can be a cool dude, an engineer, or a cool lady as an engineer, but that's the perception. The architect perception is executive. So, you know, the architect's going to walk in an Armani suit or a Canali suit. The engineer's going to be in a T-shirt. The architect's going to be focused on their executive presence and their soft skills and their leadership skills and uh, their empathy, their business acumen, because they're going to be talking to CXOs CEOs, CFOs, CTOs, CIOs. They're going to be giving presentations in industry conferences. They're going to be talking to the press. Like just today, just yesterday, I was speaking to International Business Times. They reached out to me for comments. I gave them, and I posted that article on LinkedIn today. So Chris popped a link to my most recent uh, International Business Times uh, quotes from today's article in the chat box. But that's what it is. You know, I think I've been in about 50 magazine articles in the last six months. That's common for a real architect. Because the architect must have so much business acumen, so much sales skills, so much leadership skills. So when you think of the cloud architect, think of a strategy consultant or a management consultant. Think about a smooth, polished business executive 
that goes and meets with the CEO and asks them about their business, their business goals, their business pain points, their business challenges. And then the architect advises that business professional or the CEO on how to improve it. So if the CEO comes to you and says, Mike, we're looking to enhance our revenues. We believe we can do it with these technologies. Can you advise? We're going to think about the technologies that can enhance their revenues. Now, right now in the U.S., we have a very tight labor market. Not for the right reasons. The economy is in shambles. We have the highest level of inflation in 40 years, one of the lowest level labor participation rates in decades. And you know, at the same time, we've got this sky high unemployment rate. Now, when you actually look at employee productivity, it's down to some of the worst levels it's been in a long time. So we have a tight labor market because people aren't doing their job in the US. There's a lot of quiet quitting and things going on. Now, I promise you, all those quiet quitting people will be fired. They're, the people that get hired to replace them are going to say thank you for those jobs. And quite frankly, I think all those Americans that are doing quiet quitting will be replaced by people in the developing world that are hard and hungry and willing to work. Because as an employer, they can't deal with someone that says, tell me about my work-life balance or tell me about how much time I get off or I'm not willing to do this. That's not my job. They want people that are doing it. So think, architect, strategic business advisor, walking in there in a suit, talking to people, talking to the press, speaking at conferences, executive, 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 executive. Think as a cloud engineer, as a techie. Now, up and up, that's why people have a hard time getting cloud, engineer, cloud architect jobs because they get 10 certifications. They know nothing about business. And then they try and apply for things. And then you know what the main part of a cloud architect interview is the final part? A presentation. They'll give you a project to design. You'll have to present it and sell it back. There's no coding test. There's no configuration test. And here's how you can tell. Often, the people that focused on their 15 certification make it to the first interview, the second interview. But they all fail, and their interviews end during the presentation phase. So think about it this way. Smooth polish. One of the biggest global banks recently hired a lot of our people. And what they told the candidate when they were hiring is, look, I don't want an engineer. I want a salesperson and a lab coat. That's the position. So think of the salesperson and a lab coat. So yeah, let's, let's just keep it there. Great question up and up. And your resume needs to focus, scream business executive, digital transformation specialist. Your LinkedIn profile needs to scream digital transformation specialist. The way you walk and talk needs to scream digital transformation specialist. And you'll never touch the technology. It's all, all, all. Win. You've been hearing so many of your friends and this program got hired. This is so exciting. Is this the evidence the program works no matter what any age? So when every day I get somebody hired, yesterday there were two people, one was 61 and one was 63. Got a 20-year-old like Daniel Bosu, got his first tech job at a big bank. Love Daniel Bosu. He's the son I always wanted. Um, but he got hired by the Global Bank and he even didn't, he didn't even graduate high school. But he was so smart, so motivated, so capable, so amazing. Look, if you, if you ask me about Daniel Boso, I say amazing, amazing, amazing. Like I said, he's the kid I wish I always had. I, I love him almost as if he was my own family. And that proves that we can get someone from 20 years old without finishing high school all the way to yesterday, two 63-year-old 60, people hired. And every day when it's somebody and it's somebody and somebody else. Our program works for the following reasons. I've been an architect for two decades. Not, or two and a half decades. I know what architects want. So when, do you know what I did? How I spent my last 20 years. I've asked every single hiring manager, every single executive, every single recruiter that I came across. Now imagine you're an architect and you consult with hundreds of businesses a year. And you ask three people per business. I've done that for 20 some years straight. So every day I speak to executives. Two weeks ago, we were speaking with the chief information officer that asked for recommendations from our program. Two days ago, somebody at AWS wanted three students from our program. We just gave them three more recommendations. But our brand is so strong that people literally reach out to people. Like I had a student uh, trying to think of his name right now. And the recruiter said, I hear you're part of Go Cloud Careers. I need to talk to you. 
actually had a student from AWS reached out to him just the other day and said, um, oh my God, uh, you're part of Go Club Careers. I'd like to talk to you. So we built the brand. And you know, we don't spend money on ads for the most part when to build this brand. What happened is we got so successful. Information Week reaches out to us. We're actually a contributor to their publication. DevOps Magazine we've been published in. Tech Republic, Tech Radar, Informa reached out to us. Investors Business Daily. I mean, I could go on. There's about 50 different publications. They all reach out to us because CEO Weekly, uh, Authority Magazine, we're in all of these places. And they're reaching out to us because we've been so good at getting people hired. And our average graduate is between 106, 120 and two hundred eighty-three, I'm sorry, $287,000. That's been the range in the last year. Occasionally, we get somebody less than that. But for the rule, that's the range. But I'd say normal is about 160 to 180 for our average graduate without experience, without experience. So, when we'd love to train you, and uh, there's a reason we do it. We know the job so well. We know what the hiring managers want so well. We ask the hiring managers constantly, is this your perfect hire? Because if we know what the perfect hire is, then guess what? We can train our students to be the perfect hire. So, we're not just like the rest. The rest charges people for a certification, and employers don't care about certifications. The last 100 hiring managers said, Mike, I don't want paper certifications. I need somebody that's confident. And when I ask employers, what do you think of certifications? They say, 20 years ago, it was cool, but I could just buy one. You can even find somebody to take your certification exams for you. I could send you to three websites that have a 99.7% guaranteed pass. You know why? They're, they're selling you a copy of the exact copy of the exam. So that's why certifications don't do it. You need competency. And when, with our 500-hour cloud architect career development program, that's why we're getting people cloud hired every single day. And our cloud engineering program is doing great, too. Thank you for mentioning this one. And, yes, we work real hard to get our students hired, real hard. And when one of my students get hired almost every day, sometimes multiple per day, wow, I'm a really happy camper. Thank you so much, Wynn. Let's work with you. Let's get you cloud hired. Hark, you're actively looking for a solutions architect job, but do not have previous, but do not have previous experience in a similar field. How should you approach these posting websites, such as LinkedIn, Indeed, and so on? Well, Park, the first thing I'm going to tell you is you have to be a solutions architect first, which means if you have the certified solution architect professional, you still don't know anything about solutions architecture. Because here's what a solutions architect is. Someone that designed something to solve a customer's business problem. They present it back and they sell it to them. What's not covered in uh, certification? Design, present, or sell. So you need training. So you should not be approaching any posting on LinkedIn, Indeed, and so on until you're actually a trained architect. So I would ask you this. Do you have knowledge in BGP, how to design it, how to tune it? Same thing for OSPF, IP addressing, subnetting, supernetting. You know how to do that perfectly on your own. Do you know which WAN technology to choose, whether it be an SSL-based VPN, IPsec tunnel, Private line, Ethernet over MPLS, software defined networking, and SASE. Do you know when to use one to one NAT, one to many NAT, static NAT, dynamic NAT, PAT? Do you understand switching, VLANs, VLAN tagging, VLAN trunking, spanning tree, rapid spanning tree, port channel, Ether channel, uh, link aggregation groups? Do you understand DNS, DHCP, ARP, proxy ARP? Now, do you understand servers and server virtualization, containers and container orchestration, block storage, object storage, file storage? databases and how to tune and optimize them, business applications to improve business performance, next generation firewalls, VPN concentrators, IDS, IPS systems. Do you know how to deliver a presentation in front of a few thousand person audience? Do you know how to respond to an RFI, RFP, RFQ? Do you know how to write a thought leadership document? Do you know how to speak to the press? Do you know how to be on camera? Have you had media training? Do you know how to build an ROI model to show the customer that this $100 million thing they're buying from you is more than mitigated by the $300 in incremental revenue that you have? If not, you need to get training like our Cloud Architect Career Development Program. So you've got two options. Option one, get an MBA and then learn all those technology pieces I told you and then get some special training on presentation, negotiation, skills, and executive presence. Option one, or take our Cloud Architect Career Development Program. But you can't get there with just a certified solution architect professional. It's nowhere close to enough. I will say that gives you maybe 5 to 8% of what you need, but the rest of it is this. See, that's the job. We design, present, and sell. We're strategic advisors, and that's why people say you can't get a cloud architect job without experience. Nonsense. 
Nonsense. Look, Delroy Bat had no experience when he got hired. Daniel Bosu had no experience when he got hired. Jennifer was a mental health tech when he, she got hired. Jeffrey was a geologist when he, got, when, when he got hired. Coyote was a college student when he got hired. Yvonne was serving food when he got hired. The point is, is you can get it without experience, but you've got to be competent. Competent. So you've got to get competent long before you apply for these jobs. How much knowledge do you need to know? Well, I'd say we went through about 50,000 pages of documents when we put together our course to make it real. You got to remember, a cloud architect, a lawyer, and a doctor all earn the same pays. At the higher levels, a cloud architect will earn more than a physician by far, and far more than an attorney, because of their business acumen, their leadership skills, their executive presence. So when you keep that in the back of your mind, then you know what you need to do. But don't apply for jobs until you're ready. Here's what's going to happen. You go in the interview. They won't hire you. You burn the bridge. You go in the next interview. They won't hire you. You'll burn the bridge. I will tell you the average person that came to me had already done through those silly certification courses. They've done three or four certifications. They went on 40, 50 interviews. And then they told me they can't get hired because they have lack of experience, which is never the truth. And here's the reason why. So... I have zero time in my life. I'm a hiring manager. Every hiring manager has zero time. If we interview someone, for every person we interview that we spend 30 minutes with, we work 30 minutes late that day. There's no way around it. So if we interview four people, at minimum, we're working two hours late. So we will never interview someone that we don't plan on hiring. The problem is when somebody interviews and they're not competent, we say, we could say, sorry, you're incompetent or you stink. We could say that, but we don't. We say, Come back when you have more experience. Doesn't it sound so much better, but it's really saying the same thing. So that's what you need to do. You have to be an architect before you apply for the architect position. Do that and you'll get hired. Do that and you'll get hired. Chris, we can go to the next one. Elizabeth James, to be sure that one can do their best in a program, how long should they study? Elizabeth, how fast do you read? How fast do you learn? How fast do you remember things? Different. I can read a thousand pages a day and remember it. So I could get through real fast, okay? Somebody else can't do that. So I'd say on average, it's taking us about eight months to get somebody caught hard. On average. I'd say that's about 15 hours a week or so of studying, but that's on average. If you learn faster, it'll be less. If you learn slower, it'll be more. So the real key is working at it and never quitting until you get to your goals. Look, our program can be done in 16 weeks. It can. But I let students stay in the program for up to a year because life happens. I had one student that had to go to Bangalore for months. I had another student that had to go to Ethiopia for months. And we still wanted to graduate, so... They came back, we rolled them back into the program with open arms. So I'd say on average it's about 15 hours a week, but it could take more. Our program is approximately 500 hours in length. And uh, if you take 500 divided by 15, that gives you about 30 weeks. Actually, 30, that gives you to 450. So, so 33 weeks if you did 15 hours a week. But then again, everybody's pace is different. So it could be less or more for you. But I'd say 15 hours a week for about eight months on average. And that's a good question. But we all learn at different paces. What, what, what your background has to do, your ability to learn, your business acumen, all these wonderful things kind of keep you there. So I'd say that's about on average. Good question, though. Chris or Chow, let's go to the next one. Hi, Burr. It's good to see you again. Update knowledge by Garab. You have a CCNA. Okay. How do you get an international tech support job at your, if your English is not so confident? Well, update. You said you have a CCNA. That's just a certification. That's meaningless. What is your networking knowledge? That's what we need to talk about. So I think you were also the person that said, can I do a CCNA in a day? No certification will ever get you hired. And I know you ask this question a lot, so I want to keep saying this. No certification will ever get you hired. Now, if you want to get an international tech support job, you need to focus on your communication skills because you got to talk to people. 
So first, you need to learn support. The CCNA will not get you a job. The CCNP will not get you a job. No certification is going to get you a job. Now, if you told me, Mike, I've got really good troubleshooting experience. I'm used to protocol analyzers. I'm used to looking at IP packets. I've spent a lot of time debugging misconfigured access lists. I've spent a lot of time troubleshooting bad OSPF. I've spent a lot of time troubleshooting BGP. I've got a lot of experience with IP subnetting, supernetting. I've got a lot of experience debugging spanning tree problems. I've got lots of experience with port channel, ether channel, link aggregation groups. I've got a lot of experience with one-to-one -one net, one-to-many net, static net, dynamic net, and PAT. I've got lots of experience troubleshooting routing and switching problems. I've got lots of experience troubleshooting systems. Then we could talk. But you just told me you have a certification, which in my mind is worthless. I mean, a certification is like a piece of paper. Here's a piece of paper, trash. It's gone. The only thing I view a certification except for the CCIE is useful for is in the, if it's a cold winter and your heater runs out, you can burn it and create a little heat. You're talking certifications. I'm talking about the ability to do the job. Managers do not care about certifications. I've asked thousands of them. No one cares. The only people that care about certifications are the certification providers. So certifications will paint a picture. Now, if you don't focus on your communication skills, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to ask you, explain BGP to me, and you're not going to be able to explain it, which means I can't hire you. So if I don't know what's in your head, I can't hire you. But you're saying you've done CCNA. It's just a certification. What do you know? In the chat box, tell me what you know, and then I can help you get it. But it's not on certification. Certifications will do nothing other than help you get an interview. But if you don't have it, you're there. But you got to be able to communicate it well. Like the word COZ, for example, will keep, you, will keep somebody from hiring you right then and there because they're not going to, because they need your precision in your language. When it comes to troubleshooting and debugging things, you have to get the correct information. So, what do you think the most critical skill is? Communication skills. For the doctor, what do you think the most skill is? Communication skills. For the architect, what do you think the most important skill is? Communication skills. So, stop focusing on certifications. Start focusing on your communication skills, and then you'll be there. So the key is, it's not about certifications. You can get hired without a certification, but you need to be competent, competent, competent. That's really the key. And I don't know what you know or know what you don't know, because you just mentioned your certification. And we all know my views on certifications. Now, why do I feel this way? Because every day I interview somebody certified and none of them know anything. They all know certification things. And what's on a CCNA exam is not what you're going to do in support at all. So that's the reason. If you want an international tech support job, focus on your communication skills and focus on your troubleshooting skills. Not CCNA skills. Troubleshooting skills. But here's the problem. And by the way, update, English is not my primary language. It's my second language. I speak Greek in the house. And sometimes my English is a little off. If I say to Chris, open the lights when we walk into a room, he might look at me like we have two heads until he learned me. Now, if I say that to Chow, who's on my team, ah, turn on the lights. Yeah, she gets it. But the point is, is when I go to England, I speak UK English. When I go to America, I speak American English. You got job without certification. That's the, that's the key. You can get a job without the certification. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But you can't get hired without, the, without these things. So you're good. You got something, which is good. Now the key is if you want something to support international, get better. Work on those communication skills. Work on getting information from people. Because how do you solve somebody's problem if you can't ask the right questions? That's the key. That's the key. So learn to be good. Learn to be great. Learn how to ask the questions. Learn how to listen actively. So that's the second thing. I, I, when I train architects, if, if they've come from an engineering background, they want a piece of paper. They're like, give me a piece of paper with the requirements. And I say, no. And they say, I want that paper. And I say, nobody's going to give you a piece of paper in real life. You got to go ask the right question and you got to listen and write it down. And my students get it. Like Chow the other day, we were doing some internal training and uh, 
here's what happened. I was really, really impressed. I went through an architecture that's the kind of thing that almost nobody would ever get through. And I asked all my architects in the room and people who are my students had this, 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 this. They got it. I got like so much. And then Chow, she had this four page notes that she pulled out and she, she, she heard everything. And see, that's the key. And English is not her primary language either. Vietnamese is her primary language, but she learned how to listen. So please work on those things and you're going to do great, 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 great. Poonam Patel, how do you relate AI skills with cloud architect? Little light on this? Sure. How do you relate flying an airplane to being a lawyer? Same thing. As a cloud architect, your goal is not artificial intelligence at all. As a cloud architect, your goal is digital transformation. How do you improve the customer's business performance with technology? So what's your business acumen skills, your leadership skills, your sales skills, your executive presence, your communication skills? What's your knowledge of network and data center and cloud technologies? That's the architect job. Now, as architects, we do care a little bit about machine learning. Here's the reason why. As an architect, we're going to be saying, well, what's this end-to-end -end system? What can we do to improve business performance? And if we've got data sources coming in from four different places, and then we take these data sources and somebody on the data engineering side writes a Python Spark script, we can then take that data and normalize that data, maybe stick it in, say, like a landing zone, maybe catalog that data, put it into a data lake, and then run some machine learning algorithms on it. So there is that. But you know, it's a different career. So a cloud architect is going to design the end-to-end -end solution. And who do you think is going to be doing the machine learning AI? A data scientist or a big data architect. That's not our job. So it's one of those things that it's going to be extra background knowledge, but it's not the job. So no, if you want to be an architect, don't get AI skills. Now, if you want to be a data scientist, which I don't recommend for the following reasons, it, by the time you get done your PhD in advanced statistics, and then you learn data science on top of that, you're going to cost you $100,000. And when you're done, you're going to have to apply for job after job after job after job. Two years later, if you're lucky, you get hired, and it'll be half the pay of a cloud architect. So I don't recommend that ever. And I've taken a lot of data scientists and big data people and turned them into cloud architects. But this is not our focus. Our focus is design an end-to-end -end solution. Now, if machine learning is there, great. If an ice machine is the solution, great. If a pedometer on your people is the solution, great. If a light bulb that's green makes people smile and work more, we're going to be dealing with that as a cloud architect. So for us, it's not about the tech. The world's greatest product architect in the world was Steve Jobs. There's a video he made out there. It's on YouTube. You can see it. It was an old speech, and he says, the best, never talk about the tech. And he showed how Nike didn't talk about the shoes. Disney didn't talk about what they did. Apple never mentioned their own product. They talked about the innovation and creative things you can do with it. It's not about speed and feed. It's not about algorithms. It's about digital transformation. So keep that in the back of your mind. Digital transformation. So if AI is part of it, great. You can talk about AI. But remember, the skills of AI are not our job. Architects do not touch the technology. We design it, present it, and sell it. So if you know PyTorch or TensorFlow or you can write a Python script, not relevant for us, somebody else's job. So you don't use this. But it does make you a better architect because you have a better knowledge about machine learning things. And if you know enough about machine learning, you could then advise your customer, hey, wait, you know, it looks like you're struggling with making business decisions here. For example, and uh, would you like some insight to be able to make better influences? If you were able to make better decisions in your real time, Mr. or Mrs. CEO, would that help you in your business? Yes, it would. Great. Well, as part of your big data environment, what we can do is we can integrate some machine learning. And then you introduce them to the data scientist that's going to do it, not you. So again, architect, design, present, and sell. No hands-on. Now, that's not true. We do write Word documents. We do make Excel spreadsheets. We use email. We use a graphics program. When you're a junior, you'll be using things like Lucidtrot, Draw, I.O., or Visio. And when you're a really senior elite architect, you're going to be drawing a picture on a napkin, taking a picture of it, and sending it with a graphics professional to design it for you, to print it out for you. See, that's kind of the job that you need to think about. I hope that makes sense to you.
Cookie Monster. Are coding skills necessary for the architect? Never. Cookie Monster, we don't touch the tech as an architect. We design, present, and sell. Now, for a cloud engineer, they are coding. And that's where people get confused. Architects design, present, and sell. Engineers code and configure. So for the engineer, critical skill. For the architect, no. Sunshine, can you get an appointment with me for consultation? Well, there's two options. Right now, I'm here free, and you can ask me any questions you want. You can book a private consult with me. My team can give you a link on how to do it. It's about $400 for the hour, and there's at least eight weeks for people that desire to speak to me to even book that appointment. The reason there's more than eight weeks, I can have a couple of conversations with someone that can go in an interview and earn you know, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 extra. So I try not to do them unless somebody's going on an interview or has a real reason. I'm online three, free, three times per week, which case you can answer, ask any questions you like. So I'm trying to give you the advice I can free, but you know, there's an opportunity cost to my time. So if you actually want to talk to me directly, unfortunately, I have to charge for it. So yes, you can book an appointment. There is a charge for it. And it will take you at least eight weeks to book it because I am booked up with calls 16 hours a day, seven days a week for the next eight weeks straight. But yes, you can do it. And I'd be love to speak to you. And I'd be honored to speak to you. But I'm here free. We're live right now. Ask us any questions you want. And on Thursday, when I do my How to Get Your First Cloud Job webinar, again, I'm live and free, and it's on Zoom, and you can ask me questions. So any way I can help you, I can. I'm trying to do it for free right now. So if you've got a question, I'd love to talk to you. But if you really want to consult with me, uh, Chris or Chow or somebody from my team, but uh, how to create a one-to-one -one consult in the uh, chat box. But I'm trying to do it free right now to be as helpful as I can. tell it's a very helpful session you're looking for the opportunity as an azure security engineer there have been many azure security related courses with discount i don't know what you mean by that but to tell i can tell you one thing you can take an azure course that's a certification course and in the end you're still gonna have to come back to me to be retrained because no certification teaches you anything but if you tell me what you want to do i can tell you there but i don't know what you mean with azure security courses we teach cloud Every one of my architects and engineers knows how to do security on Google, AWS, Azure, OpenStack, Nutanix. And see, here's the thing, Patel. 90% of the cloud security stuff is not the stuff that Azure makes or Google makes or AWS makes. We're not going to be using WAF to secure our enterprise. We're going to go to Palo Alto or Cisco or Fortinet or Checkpoint. We're not going to be using Macy for intrusion detection. We're going to be using a real intrusion detection prevention system made by a company that does nothing other than that. See, one of these AWS services, hey, you've been hacked. Okay. Or Microsoft, yeah, you've been hacked. The stuff that we're going to get these next generation firewalls and these really good IDS IPS systems will tell you've been hacked, and they're going to stop the hack in its tracks. See, if you want to be an Azure security engineer, don't study Azure security. Study security. And that same security works in Azure, AWS, Google, the data center, and everywhere else. So I wouldn't waste my time on an Azure security course, because if you do, you're going to need to be retrained and secured. And now we could retrain you. A company like Global Knowledge could retrain you. You could go to Palo Alto for training, and they could retrain you. You could go to Cisco for training, and they could retrain you. But don't waste your time in an Azure security related course, because they're going to teach you proprietary stuff, which you will not be using. It's not security. And the proprietary stuff made by the cloud providers, I want you to think about this. Who would give you better security? Checkpoint, for example, an organization that's been involved in security and does nothing other than security for 30 years. All they do. So if you want a gold medalist, who's, here's some of my favorites. Simone Biles, the gymnast. Watch her move. It's incredible. Usain Bolt, the sprinter. Wow, he's like lightning. It's incredible. Michael Phelps in the pool. Fast. You know what they do? Swim. Sprint and do gymnastics, which is their field. That's how you become great, 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 great. You master your career. Now, that is Checkpoint, Palo Alto, Fortinet. Their whole career in their whole, our companies are all about security. So they're like the Usain Bolt running as fast as possible. Now you got Microsoft, Google, AWS, and here's what they do. Let's all go to AWS, for example. They sell stuff. They're a great retailer. 
They own a cloud. They do a little networking, a little compute, a little security. They're, they do a lot of stuff. They, they're in everything. What do we know about experts? They focus on one thing. What do we know about a jack of all trades? They're a master of none. So you want to know security? Learn security. Learn real security and apply that whether you're on the AWS cloud, the Azure cloud, the Microsoft cloud. They are all wonderful clouds. Look, AWS is amazing. Microsoft is amazing. Google's amazing. They've got some of the best and brightest people in the world. But if it comes down to security, I'm going to a security architect. So let's say I had to go on a dangerous, dangerous trip. I got two people that I can bring with me. I know I'm going to be in a high crime environment. Person one. Well, they are uh, a wilderness person. They're a mountain climber. They're a swimmer. They like to go camping. Person two are two Navy SEALs from SEAL Team Green or SEAL Team Six. SEAL Team Six, the world's most elite fighters in the world. And I'm going into a place where I might be involved in combat. Do I want the Navy SEALs where that's all I do? Or the jack of all trades? I want my Navy SEALs. I want my Israeli commandos. I want my SAS commandos from the UK Special Forces. That's what I want. So my recommendation to you is go study the best. Get out of this cloud nonsense. Get into security. It's the same principles that apply for everything else. And in Azure course, they're not going to teach you how to write a security policy because that's not what you're going to do. They're not going to teach you how to work with the next generation of firewalls, which is what you're going to be doing. They're going to talk about all these proprietary things. And then when you propose it to a customer, they'll laugh you out of the room and say, uh, thank you. We know you're certified, but we need somebody with more experience. Learn security. You'll be great. Lots of great places to learn security. We could teach it to you. Others could teach you security, but learn security, not any proprietary security, anything. Good question, though. And Chris or Chow, we can go to the next one. Unique Dominican style. Hello, family. I am so happy to see you. Nice to have you over here. Bienvenido. How to improve your communication skills. Well, training. So here's what I, uh, something that always amazes me. People think that how could you do a job unless you've trained for it or experienced it. What if I told you this? What if I told you that humans have zero instincts whatsoever? At birth, a human will die if it's not fed and taken care of by a parent in less than three days. Now my cat, Cindy, she was left in the wilderness because something happened to her mother. Cats have instincts. My little kitten figured out how to eat bugs and lizards and whatever else she could find until she got taken to the cat rescue, until I, I adopted her, and I think she rescued me, not me rescue her, but that's neither her nor there. <laughs> but the point is, is humans have no instinct. Nobody's born a doctor. Nobody's born a lawyer. Nobody's born an airplane pilot, and no one knows how to speak well. No one. What if I told you that I was an introvert, shy, and clumsy? I'm not joking. What if I told you that the first time I asked a girl on a date, I threw up? The second time I asked a girl on a date, I threw up. What if I told you that when I was an EMT paramedic paying my way through school, when I met my wife, and I'm not joking, and I'd go to a wedding and people would say, hey, Mike, how are you? I told them about the worst things I saw in the ambulance that day. Exactly. Yeah. So the point is I had no knowledge on how to communicate. Now, what did I do? I got training, 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 and more training. I took about a quarter of a million dollars of training on communication and medicine and leadership skills. I'm not joking. Companies paid for it. And now I present internationally, constantly present at conferences, present everywhere. The point is you need training. So I got training. Now, all of our programs, our cloud engineer program, our cloud architect program, and our tech career accelerator program, all focus on your communication skills. And the reason I focus this is most people do not have the money to buy one of these courses. So we take our course, which is $700. To learn these skills on your own, you could buy the training, but it's going to cost you thirty, forty thousand dollars. It's just not cheap training. Soft skills training is expensive. Leadership training is expensive. Executive communication skills are expensive. CXO relevancy communication skills are expensive. Presentation skills are expensive. I mean, for example, you go to Speakeasy to get the kind of training that we would do. We'll charge you five thousand dollars for it, and that's just for a presentation piece, just a little tiny component of it. A little on CXO relevancy, executive presence, all of it. And they are one of the best people. I love Speakeasy. Jerry Weissman's got a presenting to win course, which is amazing. It's great. Again, super expensive to deal with. But the point is, is it's good training. I've done all of these. 
I've also done more and more and more and more and more, 50, 60 of these courses, and I've spent my lifetime reading on communications. If I told you that I read three books a week for 20 years, and two thirds of them were, uh, well, and two thirds of them were either on psychology, sociology, or communication skills. And the reason I read the psychology and sociology and neurolinguistic program and body language reading books was to better communicate. So it is a lifelong process. Invest in yourself. Invest in your communication skills. And wow, what's going to happen to you? Your career will rise. Your salary will rise. The world will come seek you out. You'll be at conferences. You'll be a thought leader. Be great. Learn your communication skills. I'd love to train you, or you can train on your own, but learn them. Learn them. You need training. Any advice for one with IT support experience? Which, which one would be good between engineering and architecture? Burrow, what do you want to do? That's the key. There is nothing about support that's going to make you a good engineer or architect. Nothing. But, actually, there's a little bit, I can tell you. But what's going to matter is your training. I wasn't born a doctor. I wasn't born knowing how to practice medicine. I wasn't born a network engineer. I wasn't born a cloud architect. I trained for these things. I trained to be a nurse practitioner. I trained to be a nurse. I trained to be a paramedic. I trained for it all. Now, here's the good part of IT support that you've been in. You have to talk to people, right? You have to ask some questions. Now, the best part of support is, here's what it's like. Hey, everybody, my computer doesn't work. I'm mad, mad, mad. Okay, so that's what you get. So you get that. Now, if you're good at support, say, you're like, okay, I'm sorry you're struggling here. Could you explain to me what's going on so I can get this solved for you and we get you back on your way and you'll be happy. Now, when you can take that rah, 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 person and smooth them out, ah, uh, that's a good skill, Burrow. That's a good skill. So if you are in support, if you can pull out the times where you, for example, you actually got better information and took angry people and made them happy, that's the take thing to take out of that job. Now, the engineering, it's not going to teach you the engineering, and it's not going to teach the architecture. So either one, you're going to have to learn from scratch. And that's okay. Training is there. You need to train for every job. You know, when I went from medicine to tech, I needed training. It's okay. Training's good. That's why we do what we do. We need training. So the key is you're going to need training either way. So it's a matter of which would you like to do. That's the difference. Which would you like to do? So engineering, you probably have some good experience getting information from people. Good. Good. And uh, if you want on the architecture side, the emotional intelligence you develop by talking to people and smoothing them out is probably going to be good too. So I'd say you're an equal level playing field for either job. You're going to need training either way. Train for the job you want. What is that job? So the bigger question for you, Burr, is what do you enjoy? If you want to do a position where you design something, set, present it, and sell it, you want to be an architect. Get trained to be an architect. If you want to be an engineer, guess what? Get training to be an engineer. So Burr, not the hiring managers, but people that are lost seem to have it in their mind that they can learn on things on the job. Well, yes and no. So if you wanted to be an airplane pilot, do you think working as a flight attendant and an airplane mechanic would help you? No, of course, you need to go to training. Do you think if you were a lawyer and said, I'm a lawyer, but I want to be a doctor, it's enough, you've got to go to medical school. So if you're in support and you want to be an architect, you need to go to architect school. If you're in support, which is more te technician work, and you want to be an engineer, you've got to go to engineering school. So which course you could do one. And that's really the key. Look, I would love to make you a cloud architect with our cloud architect career development program. Or a cloud engineer with a cloud engineer career development program. Well, the key is you're gonna have to train for either one. And there's other ways you can learn these skills on your own too. But the key is first figure out which career you want and then learn the skills. Now, Barra, if Delroy can be working and Daniel can be working and Jennifer can be working, and Yvonne can be working, and Coyote could be working, and Jeffrey could be working. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank because it's, it's so common. And they've never touched tech before. And all of a sudden now, they're architects. It shows that it's not their experience, it's their competency. So the bigger question is, what do you want to do? But it's never going to be, here's my background. How can I do this? It's always going to be, what do you want to do? So I like to say this. 
Do you think what you ate for dinner yesterday is going to affect you three days from now? No. So what you did in your past is just, in fact, it's your past. You know, yesterday, two of my students got hired, and they were in their 60s. I was excited. I actually had a martini. I don't drink a lot. I had a martini with my friend Ted. I got home, and I was like, oh, my God, I should have never drank that one drink. I drink so little that it affected me in such a negative way. I was like, okay, that's why I only drink once or twice a year. So I had one single martini and didn't like the way I felt. So this morning, I drank a lot of water, worked out, did my yoga, sat in my 160-degree sauna, moving my fingers and toes so I could sit in a chair today, and poof, I'm here with you. Your past does not define your future. Your future is based upon the action steps you take to get to your goal. Do what you love. Become great. Get yourself caught hired. Good question, bro. When you're Vietnamese and we really do say open the light. See, that's the thing. The point is, is those of us that speak English as a second language, we all do these funny things. That's never the problem. The problem is that we're precision with our language. That matters more than whether we speak immigrant language like me or when, because let's face it, we think differently. Please hit the fuss, close the lights, and eat the fuss, open the lights. Now, when will understand what I mean if I say that in English, but when I say that to Americans, they look at me like I've got four heads until they know me. And I don't even realize they do it because that's why I think. So great point when. Great point. Unique Dominican style. You're so happy to be part of the GoCloud family, enjoying this program so much, and it's changing your GoCloud technology. I am so happy to hear that. And see, that's our goal. We want all of our students to come in, all of our students to learn, all of our students to be happy, and uh, get caught hired. Now, I got to tell you, when my students get caught hired and they leave the program, I'm so happy they're hired, but I usually feel a little bad because I miss some of these wonderful people. Because by the time we get them caught hired, they become such wonderful architects and we get to know people so well. But so excited you're with us, unique Dominican style. Haven't been to the Dominican Republic in a while. Every time I go, I really love it there. But uh, haven't been there in a little while. But uh, I'm so grateful you're here. I'm so grateful for you're with us. Thank you for your kind words and I'm truly grateful to have you here. I can't wait till you're cloud hired. You know, that's my favorite thing. My favorite thing. You're in module six now. You loved it. Wonderful. Okay, good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Please make sure to make sure you get to those weekly group coaching calls too because there's a lot of tech stuff we do in there. Make That's sure you look at my uh, private chat. I can't really see it from the position I'm in. Hold on, it's going to take me a few minutes to be able to see that, Chris. Could you break down the engineering course your team offers? You see eight courses in the bundle. I assume they are pre-recorded. What's the completion pace for the course? Does that include career services? So I'm not really sure where you're getting that from. So the main course is live training like we do all training three times per week. We're not about giving you something recorded and thinking you can do it all on your own without the ability to ask questions. So our main cloud engineer career development program is live training three times per week. And uh, in that training, it'll be on Zoom. You'll be doing cloud engineering work. So we have two deep tech days per week in the cloud engineering program live, and we do one leadership class for that. In today's program, we're going to be doing practice interviews under stress. I'm going to be creating stressful solutions, stressful situations for the students, and they're going to interview under stress. And you know why we're going to be doing interviews under stressful situations, DZ? Because when you actually interview to the job for a cloud hired, you're going to be nervous. So we're going to be there. Um, uh, we're going to be there stressing people out so they can have better interviews. So that's the main career development program. It's a combination of live courses and training and labs 
And they're not silly little labs like set up at EC2 instance. They're things like design and build your own cloud from scratch. Because when you can build an AWS cloud, and I don't mean a VPC, you could take a data center and turn it into a cloud like AWS, Azure, Google, OpenStack, or Nutanix, then you're a cloud engineer. So you'll be doing those kind of labs in the program. You'll be doing AWS labs, Azure labs, big labs like that. You're going to have live classes three times per week. In between the live classes, you're going to have homework assignments that you need to do, projects that you need to do, and you're going to turn it in for feedback. All of our live programs include education on interviewing, salary negotiation, resume preparation work, because that's part of what we do. Because if we don't focus on your career, and you just rack up a bunch of silly certifications, in the end, you're not going to be hireable anyway. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. So, so, so keep that there. So all of that includes that. Now, the next part of our program is Linux. You have to be able to know how to use Linux to be a cloud engineer. So because of that, we have a Linux module, which is deep, deep, deep Linux training. Now, you can't be a cloud engineer if you don't know how to write Python code. So we have a Python module to teach you Python engineering. Now, there's AWS labs, AWS training, Azure training, and Azure Labs, and of course, there's the weekly group recording. So that's why we broke it out. Now, personally, I want to put it in one big giant pile. I hate breaking it down into stuff. But my team determined it was not so organized when you have lessons one through 13,000 all on a list. I'm exaggerating the concept, but there's hundreds of hours of training in this program. So, you know, there is that. But, you know, that's the thing. What is the pace of the course? How fast can you get through it? I don't know how fast you can get through it. We give you, you know, six months to a year in the program. It's not our architect program. You get a year. You get at least six months in the, in the cloud engineering program to get through it. So that's the key. The key is up to you. How fast do you work? How fast do you learn? How fast do you study? But, of course, everything we do comes with resume preparation, assistance, and guidance, and training, and salary negotiation training, and uh, LinkedIn profile building and training. See, DZ, we don't have to apply for jobs in our company. If people come to our people and they harass them trying to interview them. As a rule, my students don't need to apply. Their brand is so strong. People reach out to them just because they're part of Go Cloud Careers. So now's a really great time if you want to become a cloud engineer to take advantage of our 30% off discount code, coupon code potential across all of our training platforms. And you'll, be, you'll do well. Got further questions, DZ? Please feel free to ask. Arif, good afternoon. It's nice to see you. Richard, good evening, Mike. Will this be recording after the webinar? Yes, we're going to leave this one up on YouTube. Up and up. Okay, yes. Cindy was a rescue. Oh, but now she is totally, totally, totally a princess. And what do I mean by a princess? Well, she sleeps between my chest and my arm every night. And when she's ready to wake up in the morning before my alarm, she licks me, she walks me downstairs, and she either takes me to the refrigerator or the freezer. If she walks me towards this giant freezer that we have, it's because she wants me to take out some shrimp and cook them for her, or scallops and cook them for her. Because she only eats like two or three at a time, so... I buy them frozen to frost them each day for her. Now, if she walks me over to the refrigerator, it's usually because the seared ahi tuna I made for her the previous day is what she's actually looking for, or the salmon that I made for her that she's looking for. So yes, my cat has become a little princess. She went from homeless to royalty. We love my cat, Cindy, and she's the cutest thing that we've ever had. The funny thing is, up and up, I bought the cat for my wife. She was Mrs. Cat. She loves, loves, loves cats. I go to the cat store. My wife was up in Philadelphia. She was up there, and I'm literally not joking. Um, uh, I'm literally not joking. So she went to Philadelphia. I came back with this little cat. By the time my wife got home from her Philadelphia trip, I was so in love with the cat. I never really thought it was possible. So yeah, my, me and my cat, Cindy, we go everywhere together. She's a chill cat. You're right, up and up. She's, she, she's become a princess. We can move on, Chris.
Sunshine, love you, Mike and team. We are Throw Throws are here. We love our, our audience. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Just let us know how we can help you. Does the resume preparation and interview training involve live help, or is it all better with an ordered materials? We have live classes three times per week. And we do many of these things live in our live classes. We did a resume workshop two weeks ago. Now, normally we only did that internally, but we opened it up to some external people for this one and we made it free. But you know, it, but normally we do once a month, we do resume and LinkedIn work for our material. And we're constantly doing interview training in our program. Today, we're gonna to be doing interview training under stress. You know, because normally people do interview training and it's great. How are you today, Mike? Nice to see you. Get in a comfortable chair. We're going to talk about asking you interview questions. And then the reality is you go in an interview and your heart's doing thump, 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 thump. <laughs> and now you got to go talk. And here's why we have to do interview training. We do it under stress. If I told you right now we're all communicating and we're using the prefrontal cortex part of our brain, this is the logical reasoning part of our brain. This is the thinking part of our brain. This is the good stuff. Now, when we're stressed, if we're not careful and we don't know how to push through it or train our mind, the prefrontal cortex shuts off and the amygdala kicks in. Now, the amygdala is great if you've got to go fight for your survival. It definitely does. But, and here's the but, it, it, you've got to fight for your survival. So, what happens is we train people under stress for some of these things because the reality of the interview is you're going to be stressed. And when we train you under stress, you can do things. Did you know most people in the U.S. can't dial 911 in an emergency or in the U.K. 999? And here's the reason why. They're so nervous. Their heart rate goes above 115. Their prefrontal cortex shuts off. The amygdala kicks in. And that's why the fire departments recommend people unplug their phone and practice dialing 911 or 999 or emergency services based upon their country constantly so there's that so we train it in class live classes we're not about like just so we're, we're not a certification provider they're all out there you're welcome to them and when you're done with them you can come to us and we'll actually retrain you and get you hired we're not about making one thing irrelevant content where we hide behind power playing slides talk we're about doing training live getting people to participate so no this is what we do in class that's why we have live classes now, we do have embedded training in the materials. We also have embedded projects in the materials for you to work on, which you turn in and our team gives you feedback on. But we also do a lot of this live in class. So we do live sample in class, live demos in class, so you know exactly what to do. So you're not lost. We are not a certification program. We are a life-changing career development program. We change people's lives every day. Mr. Businessman, Mike is not joking. You're almost done with the program and you just received a call from a recruiter. Then they text me and asked if you're in the market for the job. This is the best investment you've ever made. Mr. Businessman, thank you. We work so hard to build our brand and your brand. You know, I'm not one for the world to know my name. And yet I was in 50 magazine articles or so in the last six months and big TV shows and podcasts. Why? I want the world to know my student's name. So we do all this so the world comes to my students. And they come to them every day. So, Mr. Businessman, we've done some practice interviews. And you're really, really, really ready. So, knock these interviews out of the park. And let's get yourselves caught hired. Mike, Chris, Alonzo, Leo, and Chow, the team are changing lives here. You're forever indebted to you all. Well, Mr. Businessman, we love you and we love working with you. And I know your real name and I know where you're at. And it's been an honor and a privilege to work with you. I don't take working with our students seriously. And it's very, very important to me. And we're grateful to be working with you. And I can't wait till we get that caught hard, Mr. Businessman. So grateful to be working with you. Elizabeth James, you have a bachelor's degree. You is it very important? No. To have a bachelor's degree? No. Many job descriptions. Look, Elizabeth James, job descriptions are like irrelevant wish lists. So Daniel Bosu, working for J.P. Morgan Chase, didn't graduate high school. Delroy Bat has an associate degree. Uh, the person that got hired yesterday does not have a degree at all. So every job description wants 50 years experience, 45 Olympic gold medals, 
PhDs, and everything else. And then what they hire is competent. They are, here's what I'm hiring. So that's on the, some silly HR description. And why do the job descriptions look so ridiculous, Elizabeth James, for the following reason? If I told you that they get 5,000 applications for a single position, they have to weed it out. Now, Elizabeth James, and look, I've got multiple master's degrees, but I can tell you right now with people being taught in school is nothing. Is nothing. So it doesn't matter. I've gotten people cut architect jobs that haven't even finished high school. And they had zero experience, too. Delroy Batt never worked in tech. He was selling shoes at Nordstrom. Ivan Tama, who was working for AWS, got hired before he was, had a degree. In fact, they hired him. They liked him so much, he asked him, he said, look, I'm going to be graduating college in six months. Would you wait for me to graduate college till I start? He had no experience. Coyote had no experience. Jennifer had no experience. She was a mental health tech. So, you know, I don't worry about job descriptions. I worry about getting people hired. If I told you the first job that I wanted, wanted 15 years tech experience, and I, and I had no degrees in tech because mine were in healthcare and zero experience in tech. Nobody cares. They care about competency. So of the thousands and thousands and thousands of hiring managers I spoke to, and I say, what do you want? They say the following. They say, we want someone that can do the job. We want someone that we can trust. We want someone that knows what they know and knows what they don't know so they don't make mistakes. We want someone that's energetic, enthusiastic, and passionate about the work. We want someone that's emotionally intelligent and raises the energy of the room. We want someone that's a good team player and someone that's willing to go above and beyond. I've yet to hear a single manager tell me that, well, that's not true. One time 20 years ago, I did have somebody that said they were looking for somebody with advanced degrees in computers. But that was only one. Gotten people hired for 20 years. My degrees aren't in tech. None. None. One's in nursing. One's in business. So don't worry about it. Become great. But you got to be great. And if you don't have a degree or experience, you have to be better. That's the key. You have to be better. Why would somebody hire a 20-year-old Daniel Bosu with no experience? Well, like I said, he's the kid I always wanted. He's so smart, so capable, so motivated, so willing to go beyond. Such a great team player, such a good communicator, such a good leader. Nobody cares about the education. But you can't replace a Daniel Bosu with a PhD. Daniel Bosu is somebody special, strong, smart. Companies want that. That's what they're looking for, not degrees. Good question, though. Chris, let's go to the next one. Ciao. I know your life will be changed once you get a jo this job. I believe you can do this. You're strong. You got this, Mr. Businessman. See? That's my amazing ciao. Now, Chow is, is just so wonderful. That's the kind of team I worked hard to build. You know, Chow's there. She works for me. And she's so concerned about making sure my students are successful. We love Chow. Thank you, Chow. Even, th even right here, you're supportive to my students. I can't thank you enough. We love you, Chow. Thank you for working so hard for our students. DZ. Thanks for answering. So Linux Python will be covered live along with demo. So yes, Linux we teach live often. Networking we teach live. Terraform we teach live. Uh, AWS and Azure sometimes we teach live, but that stuff's so silly easy that we have you do some of it on your own. We do teach a lot of AWS, a lot of the networking pieces we do really live because that's where it gets complex. I mean, turning on a virtual machine, it's clicking three buttons. I taught an eight-year-old to do it in less than three minutes. But the complicated things like the VPC peering and transit and all those kind of things, yeah, we do a lot of that. So in Saturday's classes, we get deep, deep, deep into hands-on technical configuration. In Tuesday's classes, we usually do some Linux or some other tech modules live. And on Friday's classes, today, we mix the engineers and architects in the same class so we can give them both leadership training so they both have unlimited career potential. Yeah, but we do a lot of... So there's pre-recorded and live and hands-on end projects, and we give you feedback the entire process. But Python, because it's so simple, we, we don't waste our time doing that live in class. We give you a four-hour module. It's very simple. The rest of the stuff we do teach in class. Good question. Let's go to the next one.
You perpetually research various cloud training programs and you must say you've never heard of any other program that speaks building a cloud. Your mind is blown from hearing this. So here's the thing momentarily stopping. We do things that no one else would do for a reason. So I come from the martial arts background. And if you ever saw the Karate Kid movie where they were like, wax on, wax off. Now what's going on is in Okinawa and Kawada, they have blocks like this. So they were training and patterning these movements. When people ask us for a syllabus, and so many people try to copy our syllabus, they don't understand why we do what we do. And we do so many things related to polishing the person, building the cloud, working with real active directory servers. And here's the reason why. When it comes to getting your first architect job or your first engineer job, and you have no experience, you have to be better than the competition. So we do things that no one else would be willing to do because somebody else wants to sell a $100 certification course and you're done. Or some people are selling a $5,000 certification bootcamp, but when you're done that, you're done. You still don't know the cloud. So we need to do special things with our students. We create specialty internships so they've got work experience on the resume. They build clouds. And why do we do so many things like this? Because what does a cloud architect do? They build the plan to go from the network in the data center to the cloud, which means if you don't understand the network in the data center, you don't understand the cloud and you could never do the job. So we got deep in our data centers. I've got an OpenStack cloud and our students come into the OpenStack cloud. And while they're in the OpenStack cloud, they're building clouds, they're setting up server registration, building containers, building firewalls, VPN concentrators, file servers on Linux and Windows. We're doing it all the hard way. And then when we have them down on the cloud, it's silly easy. So by doing this, building clouds, coaching executive presence, leadership skills, sales skills, our students stand out here. We also do tremendous brand building skills to make them stand out here. And that one, when someone does not have a degree and they don't have an experience and they ask someone a technical question, it's about this. So if employers care about the following, competency, trustworthiness, knowledge of what you know and know don't know so you don't make mistakes, energy, enthusiasm, and passion, that's what they care about. Can you bring out the best in others? Are you willing to go above my own? You're a team player. So let's get it this way. I love my cat, Cindy, okay? Here we've got my cat, Cindy. And yes, by accident, she did create an EC2 instance one time. Walking on my keyboard. It wasn't the right kind of instance. Instance It was a little expensive, but all right, I paid for it. So we got over here, and I've trained an eight-year-old girl to, with cute pigtails. She's beautiful. Little girl, my friend's daughter. She clicks three buttons, and she says, EC2. Like, a, it's the cutest thing to watch. So now we've got my cat, Cindy, that creates an EC2 instance. And on the right, we got a lion roaring. I built a cloud. Now, why is this so important? No experience, no degrees. I set up an EC2 instance. I built a cloud. So who's more competent? Who's more energetic? Who's more enthusiastic? Who's more passionate? And who's more competent? And who's willing to go above and beyond? The person that built the cloud. So that's why there's 500 hours in our training program, because we want our students getting hired. And we want our students getting paid more than anybody else in the world and our students do. And that's why, that's why we build the cloud, because our students stand out. That's why our results are so good. And we do so many other things that are even bigger than building a cloud, which is what we do to get our cloud architects hired. Thank you so much for noticing. I'm really grateful for your feedback. And we'd love to work with you. Chris or Charlie, I know there's some more we probably should go. Oh, that's my cat, Cindy. I was trying to demonstrate what a container was like to some people the other day because, you know, they've watched certification courses. They were confused. Here we go. Here's what a container is. You got an application. That's Cindy. You got a container. That's the box. Why do we like containers? Pick up that box, put it on another server. We've just moved our container like that. But seriously, isn't my cat, Cindy, the sweetest little angel? Just look how beautiful she is. Wow, that just singer just makes me smile. Thanks for popping that on, Chris. Love that cat. She is so, our. Uh, we, we currently don't have any uh, any more questions. So Actually, I, I think know we'll... there's a few people left. <laughs> I know there were some questions related to somebody being in England, for example, which whether they were in England versus uh, Aruba versus Panama versus Florida. It doesn't well, make it was sense. a student asking specifically how to get to the live classes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I saw something from the, 
somebody that had Dominican in their name that said, I'd like to take your course, I'm in England, how do I do it? Oh, I'm in the Cloud Architect Career Development, how do I get to the live classes in UK? Okay, Chris, you're entirely, you get to the same live classes the same way you get to every other live classes. When you join the program, you got a welcome email. Inside of that welcome email, there is a link on how to get to the live classes in Zoom. Please follow that link. And uh, guess what? Take classes and let's get your cloud higher. Up and up. Yes, she is our Cindy now. Now you're making like cats. Now, so Richard, you know, it's really funny. One of my students, Daniel, you know, he's like the son I was wanted. So I think very highly of him. I was so excited. We recently had a discussion with him on my birthday. He was in a brand new house and it looked beautiful. And he had two cats in there. So yes, I do think uh, the Go Cloud career does spread, spread pet love. Most every one of us has some sort of a furry friend. Chris has this beautiful cat named Sonny. I've got a beautiful cat named Cindy. Uh, uh, I think everybody's got a, a furry friend in some case. It's not mandatory, but we got a lot of people that have some nice furry friends. Okay, so let me close on this. Right now, if you're looking to get hired, we have our 30% off discount code for a short period of time, coupon code potential. My team brought it back for the following reason. Such hyperinflationary environments, we want to raise your income. If we can raise your income, guess what? You won't care so much about inflation. You'll be able to take better care of your family, and that's what we're all about, changing lives. See, architects do digital transformation. Go Cloud Careers does life transformation by giving people the most elite careers and training them for them so they can take better care of their families and, in many cases, create generational wealth. So please take advantage of our 30% discount code, coupon code potential. Please register for the completely free AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Boot Camp. It's going to be completely free in October. We're going to do an AWS Advanced Networking early in November. And I'm going to tell you this, the AWS Advanced Networking is too junior for anything. But what we will do is we're going to add so many things to it to actually make it valuable to you. I'll probably have some staff economists, maybe some leaders in the business come talk to you that month so we can really tell you what it's like in the cloud. So you're not going to be biased by certifications. You're going to know what is cloud computing. You're going to hear from leaders and experts so we can make you all better. So register for next month's booth camp. And please follow me on LinkedIn because like today, I released an article in, in, where I was in International Business Times. And I've got so many more of those to share. But we've got so much free training coming up. Please join so we can get you everything that you can need, that you can learn. I mean, obviously, our internal training is very different. It's the most elite training in the world. But we want to do what we can to help the community. Please follow me on LinkedIn. Please sign up and download the completely free a uh, Google Professional Cloud Architect book. It'll be released soon. My team is in the final stages of editing it. So sign up and get it completely, completely free. Such an honor and a privilege to work with you. DZ, we'd love to work with you. Hope you sign up at night. Yeah, I got to get my wife approval for everything. Here's the thing. I learned something in life is when you have the right education and you have the right training, you can take better care of your family. And wow, they get very, very happy. I remember when I got my first tech job. I remember when I got my first architect job and I came home and told my wife about my first architect job. Our lives were forever changed. So we hope to change your life as well. Collins, wow, Collins is so wonderful. We love you, Cloud President Mike Gibbs. We love you, Collins. We're always thrilled to see you. Look forward to seeing you in class today. Tell it was so nice to see you. Lady Godiva, you're more than welcome. We are thrilled to do anything we can have to help you build your best careers and life. I will be back uh, next week answering lots of live questions. And also, please sign up for the completely free Thursday how to get your first Cloud Architect job webinar. My team will pop that in the chat box, and it's also in the description. And let's get you all Cloud Hired. We're Cloud Promoted. Let's build your best careers. Cloud Hired, everybody.